Hello there, Lindsay Stora here. Today I'm going to do a demonstration of what you can use from your home to make art. I know at present I'm running out of sketchbook pages and things like that. So I have been and taken the back off the Quaker Oats and made myself a nice piece of cardboard here and the side piece off the Quaker Oats. I've also found myself envelopes and the inside of the envelope is sometimes as nice as the outside to use. So I'll be using them within the demonstrations that I do, but please start thinking outside the box. Think about what you can use that you have in your house. For, in for instance, you may not have paintbrushes, but you may have a household paintbrush. Um, you may not have a regular size paintbrush, but a stick from the garden or from a plant would work. Uh, if you have acrylic, great. If you don't have acrylic, you may have a tube of paint of something, or you may have a block of paint. If not, you may have some felt tip pens. Now, if your felt tip pens are old, it doesn't matter. We can still use them. We can either add a little bit of vinegar into the end of the felt tip pen, which is where you pull the stopper off the back, or what we can do is paint over with water once you've drawn in felt tip pen. I did a demonstration about this if you look on YouTube. Um, today I'm going to do a Fovis demonstration drawing uh, from my own habitat. So I'm going to draw the view through the window and I'll show you how that progresses. Thank you! If you want to do this demonstration you will need some kind of paint, it can be any kind of paint that you've got there, um, a brush or a stick and something to paint on. So in this example I've got a Quaker Oats packet and obviously some water. One of the projects that we cover at school is the Fovist artists. The Fovis were around in 1905 to 1908 and the lead artists were Vlamink, Deran and Matisse. Uh, they believed in using paint directly out the tubes onto the canvas uh, they wanted the, the colour to be pure and bold and they wanted the colour to bounce around the pitch plane. You can see the way that Vlamink has applied his brush strokes here. If there was a colour which appears to be blended, that was achieved through layering on the picture and the, the paint that these artists were using was oil. This is a painting by Matisse where you can see that he has used different daubs of colour off his brush layered over the top of others. In this work by Matisse, which is from a slightly later date, you can still see that he's kept that bright colour from the Fauvist era, but here he's done a lot more simplification, which you see in his later works. Here you'll see I'm sketching out the view from the window. Um, I'm doing this very loosely. Uh, some lines are slightly darker than others where I've decided that I'm accurate. But obviously, if things are in front of other things, sometimes we have to erase lines. So where the perspective was, just under where my hand was, I'm going to have to rub that off. And the lines of the window where the cockerel is standing, I'm going to have to erase them. If you paint over them, what's going to happen is it's going to get trapped underneath the paint and you can't get rid of it. As a general rule, I would say whatever colour you get on your paintbrush, use it in at least three places. That will ensure that you're already trying to achieve balance. So as you can see in this quick time lapse, um, I block all the colours in and then go on to black afterwards. Black is the hardest colour to paint over or to lift off first. When you're adding the black, if it's anything that's linear, if it's line based, you need to turn your picture so that you can see the line. If you just remember only to paint lines going down the way. So if you paint the lines vertically, the need to you need to turn the paper around as you saw there. That just means that you can allow your hand um, to flow, to move down the line. Here's the picture with the, an, with the actual view behind it. Here is my small painting that I've just made. 
and as you can see it is on the Quaker Oats packet it's slightly twisting this way warping forward I'm going to press it in a book to make sure that it remains flat thank you for listening to this tutorial if you want to hear more from me look on YouTube or search on Instagram Lindsay Stora thank you bye